Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel That Model Railway Guy and welcome back to another video on building my modular model railway. Once again this episode is proudly sponsored by D-Rails and also for this time Model U, both of whom I'll be talking about more later on in the video. Now last time out I made a lot of progress around the yard area and today I really want to try and finish off the rest of this module. There's a lot of work still to do and with the clock counting down to the layout's first exhibition appearance there's no time to waste so let's head back to the railway room and get stuck in. Here's the module I'm currently working on and you can see all of the scenery I did previously in the yard. Today I'll be focusing on the front half of this module though, to really finish off the area around these two sidings. Starting off with the end plates, I've cut some foam board formers to shape the landscape in front of the platform. The same is then done at the shed end of the module too, and these are just being super glued in place. I'm also adding in a little bit of height along the front of the module too. Not too much, about one centimeter at most, but this will just stop the baseboard being too flat. Again, this is cut from foam board and held down using super glue. Mod rock or plaster bandage was then draped over the formers at each end of the module just to create the basic surface. I also added plaster bandage over the larger section of foam board too, just to blend out the harsh edges where it changes height. The mod rock dries fairly quickly, so I then added a layer of filler over the top. The filler will just smooth out the landscape here and it's an opportunity to build up any sections I'm not quite happy with. The surfaces were then painted in a darkish brown colour which will act as a base layer of dirt or mud when I put the grass down later. For this I'm just using cheap acrylic paints and I usually mix in a tiny amount of black into a standard umber brown just to get a slightly darker colour. Those of you looking closely may also notice that I've added filler to the front section of the landscape to smooth this out further too. It now joins up to the land by the platform just to make the scenery flow together in a better way. While the brown paint acts as a general undercoat of dirt, at the edges I want to add a little bit of extra detailing. You can see I'm putting down a strip of PVA glue alongside the ballast here and I'll be covering this in dirt from the garden. This will act as a nice verge alongside the ballast and it'll be an extra bit of detail when the grass thins out towards the track. The dirt itself is just added over the top, dropped into the glue which will hold it all in place. And of course the excess that doesn't stick down can be cleared up later. Once again, this episode is brought to you by D-Rails, who I'm sure you know by now are one of my preferred model railway retailers. And not only are they really knowledgeable, but they're really helpful and friendly too. I mean, anytime I've had an issue or a question, they've always been more than happy to help out. And they also test locos before dispatching them too, so you don't ever have to worry about a model not working on arrival. As always, head over to their website, derails.co.uk, or click the links down in the description. They've got loads of stuff in stock in all the main scales and gauges, so it's definitely worth checking them out if you're building or about to start building a model railway. And now, let's briefly head to another part of the layout to look at a scenic feature, which I've used in the past. 
Previously, I added dry stone walling along the rear of the tunnel module, and I really like how this looks. So I'm adding more of it to this module too, with a long section of dry stone wall running along the front of not only this module, but the next one too. So in total, that's going to be eight feet of dry stone wall. Each section of wall is just glued into place, and because it's made from foam, it matches the contours of the land, going up and down the undulations as needed. With the wall now all in place, you can see just how good it looks joined together like this. So now it's time to add static grass to the layout, and once again I'll begin by putting down a base layer of glue first. Initially I like to use a larger brush to cover the majority of the area with the glue. A smaller brush can then be used to get right up to the edges of the wall or any other harder to reach areas. Then it's time for the first layer of static grass to go down. This is my base layer, and I like to use 2mm summer grass from War World Scenics for this. Now, War World Scenics aren't a sponsor for this video, but I do have a referral link in the description which you can use to get reward points with them. If you create an account with them using that link, you'll get 100 points straight away for signing up, and then an additional 500 points after you place your first order, so it's well worth checking out. Like I've said in the past, I really like using their static grass, and I use it on pretty much all of my layouts. Like I said, this is just my base layer, so while at the moment it looks very bright and a little bit like a football pitch, I will be adding more layers of static grass over the top of this to layer up different colours and lengths to create a really nice natural looking effect. Now there is a lot of excess, but don't worry, again all this can be hoovered up using my mini Henry Hoover so that it can all be reclaimed for future use. I think this hoover is actually intended as a novelty item for keeping a desk clean, but I'll be honest, I use it all the time for clearing stuff up on the layout like this. Again, there's a link to it in the description if you want to get one for yourself. Like I said, they're very useful, and cleaning up the excess like this is a very satisfying job. Now, while the layout gets cleared up, I do just want to remind you that you can get early access to every episode in this new series by becoming a channel member. In fact, the next episode in this series is available for members to watch right now, and they get loads of other little perks too. Uh, generally, I try to post behind the scenes updates from the layout. There's an exclusive wallpaper that goes out every month too. And of course, you get that little icon next to your username, along with special railway related emojis to use in the comments. Uh, there are three different tiers to choose from with the lowest being just £1.99. Like I always say, it's less than the price of a coffee. So if you like the stuff I create here and you want to be the first to see some new stuff, well click that join button below this video and you can see exactly what's on offer. So returning back to the layout, a little bit of time has passed and you can see I've now added a longer layer of static grass over the base layer. I'm now going to add some patches of grass on the dirt too, so that I can blend all the edges together. Again, I start by adding PVA, this time just in very small areas. I'm also going to add the glue around the end of the sidings too, just to create a more overgrown effect. These sidings will mostly be used for holding out-of-use rolling stock, so I imagine the stuff at the end of the sidings wouldn't have moved for several years. The 4mm grass is then added directly over the patches of glue. Going straight in with the 4mm grass like this, rather than using the 2mm base as before, will give this more of a thinned out appearance. That'll allow the base layer of dirt or ballast to show through, and especially around the track, it'll make it look more like weeds than actual grass.
and once again the hoover is on hand to reclaim all the excess. For the main grass areas, I like to add in a little bit of variation by adding small patches of different colours and shades in random places. For this, I use a small amount of layering spray on top of the existing grass, which can then have some 6mm patchy grass added over the top. Because this is a summer scene, I don't want all the grass to be bright, colourful green. Some of it would have dried out in the sun, and so this represents that perfectly. Similarly, you can see I've also added some of this patchy grass to the sidings too. The spring grass I used initially looked great, but it was just too bright considering that it was supposed to be growing underneath and around wagons. So an extra layer of the patchy grass gave it a more dead appearance. I'm then adding in some additional areas of autumn grass on the banks using the same technique. And again, I'm doing this very sparingly just to add color variations in here and there. With all the grass now complete, I can really finish off this scene by adding some foliage to the area. I like to start off by adding beads of PVA along the wall. The nozzle on the glue bottle is actually really useful for doing this, and I'd almost recommend getting this sort of bottle for jobs just like this. I then press Woodland Scenic's clump foliage into the glue at various intervals. Usually I add a decent amount of one colour first, and then I use a second colour to fill in any gaps where the glue is still showing. Like I said, this is clump foliage from Woodland Scenics, and the two colours I'm using are medium green and dark green. For larger, more prominent clumps, I then prefer to use the fine leaf foliage from Woodland Scenics. This works really well for more detailed bushes, although being more delicate, I prefer to attach it using super glue so that it sets in place quicker. With the greenery taken care of, I'm now going to turn my attention to the track. The ballast is looking much better now that the scenery is in place all around it, but it is a little bit clean, especially for a heritage railway. Well, here I've got a bottle of the Geoscenics Track Grime, which I'm going to use all over the ballast to dirty it up a bit. You can see I'm just painting it on, and basically it's a very dirty, grimy wash, which settles on the ballast and sleepers to give it a more weathered and less pristine look. Now this came as part of the siding weathering kit that I used in the previous episode to create the ash ballast in the yard. And like I said then, there's a discount code in the description in case you want to try it out for yourself. I definitely like how this looks though, and I think it adds another level of realism to the layout, so hopefully I'll be adding this to all the track eventually. Now, one thing that every layout needs is some figures to really bring the scene to life. And I know previously when I built my 009 layout, Gover Tin, everyone was going on at me about how I needed to add some people around the station. And I have now done that. So the figures you can see on screen at the moment are all made by Model U, who are also sponsors for this video. And if you don't already know, well, Model U sell really high quality 3D printed figures for every aspect of your layout. I honestly think that their figures are just the best. And like I said, they've got a really expansive range spanning across all different eras. And of course, because everything is 3D printed, you can get it in pretty much any scale you like. They also have figures designed to fit in specific locos as well. And of course, if you're looking for something a little more custom, well, they have their scanning service too, where you can create a figure 
For example, you may recognise this guy on the platform who's taking some videos of the passing trains. I definitely recommend checking out the full range of figures on their website, modelu3d.co.uk, or you can click the links in the description. And I'm going to put some of their products to the test right now. So here I have a selection of figures for the yard, and you can see just how detailed these are. I've already painted them up, and you'll notice I've been sure to do some in high-vis clothing too, just as an indicator that this is a modern-day heritage railway, despite the steam traction. Now, generally, I prefer to have figures in fairly neutral or static poses that could be held for a minute or two, rather than somebody who is obviously in motion. So I'll be placing these figures around the place in various small groups, as if they're having conversations, or for this guy, perhaps he's working on something in the yard. Before I do that though, I do have some extra details to add, some of which are already in place. To escape doing more of the dreaded point rodding, I've added these levers to the two points in the yard, which are simple 3D printed kits from West Hill Wagon Works. To get these in place, I was just able to carve out some of the foam board from around the points. The levers were then fitted in place, and I just filled in the gaps with some excess of the cinder powder I used to create the surface, and that blended them in nicely. I've also got some more detailing parts to add around the yard too, from spare wheels to pallets of axle boxes and vacuum cylinders, and this will just create a general feeling of clutter that you often see in the working areas of heritage railways. Again, all these parts are 3D printed, and they have nice detail, but they were a bit of a faff to paint. That said, when I did make a mistake, I was able to cover it over with some rust colour just to give everything a slightly expired look. Now I'm just trying out positions for everything at the moment so I can have a play with how it all looks before I lock it down. One part I'm pretty certain I know where it's going though is this rusty bogey I've painted up, which I think I'll have sitting at the end of the siding here. For the Preservation Society, it's shoved right up against the buffers and has been a bit forgotten about, but for viewers of the layout, it's right at the front of this module and is a nice little bit of detail which I'm really happy with. Finally, it's time to add the Model U figures around the yard, and again I'm just adding these temporarily for the moment until I'm happy with all the positions, and then I'll glue them down. These guys, for example, are working on some parts for the railway. Meanwhile, over here perhaps a discussion is taking place about an upcoming shunt manoeuvre. And then over on the coal dock, some of the loco crews are perhaps discussing a minor fault they've discovered on one of the locomotives. There's also one member of the public I've added in too. Standing just behind the metal barriers at a safe distance is this photographer. Perhaps he's hoping to get some photos of what's in the shed. And with that, I think this module is pretty much complete. So let's get a train running, shall we? I've got one of my sound fitted Hunslets from Rapido out, and here it's got a few of the Genesis coaches which need shunting into one of the sidings. And you may notice I've put some other locos and rolling stock on the track too. So with all the scenery on this module now done, that is another big section of the layout pretty much finished. I do want to do some additional work to the shed to weather it a bit and perhaps add some extra details here and there, but scenically I'm really happy with how the yard module has come together. I'm particularly pleased with the contrast between the grime covered area of the yard and the more traditional grassy landscape towards the front of the module. For me that really encapsulates the heritage railway feel, and I'm hoping it'll become more apparent once I do the scenery for the station in the next episode. Don't forget you can watch that video right now by becoming a channel member to get exclusive early access to the next episode in the series. And here's a little taster of what's coming up in that next video. I create a car park for the station. A major new addition arrives for the platforms. And I use a modeling cheat to blend in some fencing. <laughs>